for the sacrifice. We want to thank you for your grace and mercy, oh Lord.
And it's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it When it's all about you, it's all about you And it's all about you, Jesus Forgive us, oh Father, because many times, oh Lord, it's always about us. We have made a lot of things about us. No, Father, today, oh Lord, we want to take this decision in our lives that everything we do is to glorify you, oh Lord, is to glorify your name. All the worship, everything is for you, oh Lord. To glorify your name and magnify your name, oh Father. It's not about us. Oh, less of me and more of you, Jesus. Let's all tell that. Less of me and more of you, oh Lord. Father in heaven, thank you so much, O Lord. O wonderful Savior, wonderful Father, thank you so much, O Lord, for this wonderful time, Lord, which you've given us, o Lord, to worship your name and glorify your name, O Lord. Jesus, as we sang today, O Father, Lord, many a times we make things, a lot of things about us, O Father, Lord. Even during the worship of Father, we ask forgiveness for that, O oh Lord. Lord, let everything we do here, O oh Father, and in our lives, let it glorify your name, O oh Father, Lord. Let it be about you, O oh Father, Jesus. Thank you so much, O oh Lord, for being with us, O oh Lord, throughout the whole week. You have been so good to us. You have been protecting us, O oh Father, giving us strength, O oh Lord, in every situation, O oh Father, Lord. Thank you, Father. I would like to pray, O oh Father, Lord, for everybody who's watching this, O oh Father. I pray in Jesus' name, O oh Father, O oh Lord, that you bless their hearts, O oh Lord, bless their soul, O oh Father, Lord Jesus, bless their lives, O oh Lord. As you're spending time in your presence, O oh Father, you speak to them, O oh Lord Jesus, in ways, O oh Lord, which we cannot imagine, O oh Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, O oh Lord, for your presence, O oh Father. Till now you've been, Lord, with us, O oh Father, Lord. Accept our worship, O oh Lord Jesus. As you're going to hear the word from your servant, O oh Father, you anoint him, Lord, a special anointing on him, O oh Father. Every word that comes from his mouth, O oh Father, Lord, let it be from above. You talk through him, O oh Father. You use him, O oh Father, Lord. O oh Lord, speak through him, O oh Lord, the words which is needed, O oh Lord, for us today and for the, for the week, O oh Lord, Father. Give us our daily bread, O oh Lord Jesus what is needed, Lord. Father, as you have been so good to us, oh Father, Lord, again we ask your presence and your Lord Jesus, oh God, that you lead us throughout this week, oh Father, Lord. In every way you have been so good to us, oh Father. You have been, oh Lord, oh God, answering our prayers, oh Father, Lord Jesus, oh God. You have been, oh Lord, in situations, oh Lord, which we cannot go through. You have been with us, oh Lord, through it, oh Father. Once again, oh Lord, I ask your presence in all of our lives, oh Father, Lord Jesus. Take all the glory and honor. Take all the glory and honor, oh Father, Lord. Fill us, oh Lord, with what you want, oh Lord Jesus, oh God. Remove everything in us which 
is not acceptable in your sight and lord fill us with what you like of oh father which is acceptable in your sight of oh father lord let everything we do glorify your name of oh father lord once again of oh father I believe that you have answered our prayer of oh Father Lord therefore I ask this prayer in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amen 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 Praise the Lord greetings in the almighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I thank you so much for joining this English worship service and I I really hope that you've been blessed through this special worship service So this is a very special service or a very special sunday for all of us because we remember the resurrection of christ the thing is every sunday or every day we remember the resurrection of christ and every sunday we worship the resurrected christ we re we remember the resurrected christ but today the whole world remembers it that is the speciality of this day the speciality is that the whole world is thinking about Christ who is resurrected from death because everything else people can compare when you talk about christmas people can say i know of people who are born and i know about gods who are born but there is no one who can there is no story that can be compared with the story of the easter sunday so this sunday is a very special sunday where the whole world whole world along with us christians every sunday we are alone remembering the resurrection of christ but this sunday is the whole world is remembering the resurrected christ and i pray that in many hearts jesus would be resurrected today in many hearts jesus people would look at the resurrected christ and experience the fullness of salvation so if today is such a special day and we are asking ourselves and people around us are asking us asking us what is what is so special about today what is the importance of today let us ask this question to one one person in the bible and we go to that person we go to that man and ask him what is so special about this day to you what does this day mean to you then he would tell us i will tell you a story So please listen to his story let us take time and listen to his story what makes this day so special for him in Luke chapter 23 verse 39 to 43 let us read this verses and listen to the story of this man so this story goes like this one of the criminals who hung here there hurled insults at him aren't you the messiah save yourself and us but the other criminal rebuked him Don't you fear God he said since you are the you are under the same sentence we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve but this man has done nothing wrong then he said to Jesus and he then he said Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom Jesus answered him truly i tell you today you will be with me in paradise This is the story that man would tell us and let us try to understand the importance of this day by uh, meditating on three points we have three points and the first point is if you are Christ if you are Messiah so that is what the first thief was telling Jesus he was telling aren't you the Messiah it's not a, a, a statement of faith it's not a statement of faith but it it's it, it's in a way uh in it's in a way he's calling out jesus and telling him so i have heard that you telling that you are christ you are messiah you are the one to come you are the great i am but now i don't see any of that i i you told me you told the people and you told the world that you are christ you are the messiah but i don't see that if you are christ if you are messiah why don't you do such and such thing why don't you get down the cross and why don't you help me get get down why don't you help yourself and why don't you help me i think if jesus would have answered him jesus did not answer him but if jesus would have answered him jesus would have told him son i am on this cross to save you i am on this cross so that i because i want to save you you think i you think me getting down the cross would save you and you getting down the cross would really save you no 
me being on this cross will save you so what i want what we need to focus on is he had a special expectation for christ he expected christ to do certain things in a certain way the people the jews had a certain expectation of christ so in acts chapter 1 verse 6 they asked they then they gathered around him and asked him lord are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of israel so if the people of israel were under bondage were under bondage to the romans they were living in their own country in their own homes but they were under bondage they did not have independence they did not have freedom so uh, they were waiting desperately for a fighter for a freedom fighter for the messiah to to come and to save them to build them a kingdom a kingdom of peace and joy so when they were looking at jesus and when jesus said i am christ i am messiah the expectation was that they would he would overthrow the roman empire that he would overthrow their rule their authority and he would establish his reign he would establish his throne and they would live in peace and prosperity that's why once when jesus blessed the five uh, five loaves of bread and two fish and gave to nearly 15000 to 15 20000 people they all decided to make him king because that met their expectation because that is what they had that is what their expectation is for Christ and for a messiah so when jesus was nailed to the cross he was there humbled he was there completely betrayed and completely beaten up without without even a form of a human being now this thief looks at him and says you told that you were christ you told that you are the messiah and i had an expectation of you but right now you don't seem to meet my expectation i think that is the problem many christians have today they will look to jesus and say jesus i had expectation from you i expected that you would do something in a particular way i expected that you would open these ways for me i expected that you would bless me this way i expected that you would do certain things in my life but when jesus does not meet our expectation we get frustrated and irritated like the thief and we ask god god are you really there are you really listening to my prayer are you really my savior are you really me my god so that is that kind of uh, that kind of a question raises up because there is an expectation so today morning i want you to ask yourself what is your expectation of your of christ are you expecting god to way, work in according to your expectation or do you i we, uh, do you and i have the understanding of the way of god let me tell you if jesus came down the cross and even helped that thief come down the cross that thief would have lived and not died that day but he would have died maybe in the days to come maybe years to come he would have died and because jesus did not die on the cross his soul would be damned in hell he would he would lose he would not have eternal life but eternal death so what jesus was doing on the cross was actually saving him but that is what the thief was not able to understand was not able to grasp he thought that he could be saved by jesus getting down the cross but what actually was happening was jesus on the cross was saving him today you might be thinking why is god silent why is not god doing such and such thing for me why is god not opening ways for me why is god not doing what i'm asking him to do but but the silence today is is good for you because that is his will there is a certain plan and a will he has for our life and today it might not reach our expectation but as long as we are in his plan and we are in his will it is the best for us so they had expectation from christ they had expectation of miracles that is what in matthew chapter 12 verse 38 and 39 then some of the scribes and pharisees told jesus teacher we want to see a sign from you they said jesus we want to see we, we heard you preaching and we heard what people had to tell about you but we want to believe you but we want a sign we want some more miracles we want some more wonders to be done by you 
that is their expectation they had the expectation they had was jesus was they wanted us uh, they wanted this messiah to do some marvelous things and jesus was doing it jesus was doing it but for them the most marvelous thing and the most beautiful thing was bread being multiplied water being turned into wine the blind seeing the deaf hearing the lame running and jumping the dead rising up was the greatest thing that they thought was worth seeing and worth observing and worth experiencing but the truth in fact the truth is that the greatest miracle is a sinner being saved from hell is the greatest miracle a sinner being saved from his sins is the great miracle and that miracle happened on the cross and upon the cross when jesus died on the cross and that jesus rose up that is the greatest miracle because through that death and through that resurrection there is complete forgiveness of sin that a sinner who was supposed to be going into hell is no longer going to hell but is entering the kingdom of god is entering heaven that is the greatest miracle but the people in uh, the jews and even people during this time even christians during this time want something amazing to see what they want something spectacular to see they want god to do something spectacular in their life they don't want god to do something ordinary they say god i want something spectacular in my life but something not so spectacular might be the perfect will of god in our life maybe god is doing something very very valuable in your life that might not be spectacular that might be very gloomy that might be very depressing very sad it might be very hard on you but you need to trust you need to trust on the lord because when we trust on the lord that he is doing something great for us that it's not about our expectation but what he wants to do for us and his will for our life that is when we can really experience the joy and the presence of the god in our life right so the first thing the first question was if you are christ if you are christ the thief on the first thief on the cross had an expectation of christ the expectation of being saved but the expectation of being saved in the expected way we want to be saved we want to be blessed but in a way that we expected god to work but god's ways are not our ways his ways are superior than our ways if you are disappointed with god today if you are disappointed with god today and all that you have is disappointment you are not able to pray because of disappointment you are not able to worship you are not able to fast you are not able to serve the lord because of disappointment today i want you to understand the disappointment is because of your expectation that you have for god and the way that god wants you to work in your life is all based on expectation you want to god, you want god to bless you in a certain way you want god to save you in a certain way but if you can keep your expectations aside and if you can submit your life to god and say god please lead me please help me let your will be done in my life it's not about what i am expecting but your awesome purpose to be done in my life i'm telling you for hundred for sure the will and the purpose of god will take place in our life and it will be for the best praise the lord let's go to the second point the second point we can uh, we are reading the same story of the man that is who is telling us the story in luke chapter 23 says but the other criminal rebuked him so this is the second criminal he's talking don't you fear god he said since you are under the same sentence we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve then the second thief he opens his mouth and says see he is punished and we are punished but we are punished according to our our sin or our, uh, the kind of things that we have done we deserve this punishment that is my second point the second point is we deserve punishment as the thieves deserve to die on the cross we deserve to die because of the sin that's in our life because romans chapter 6 verse 23 says for the wages of sin is death when sin is there in our life it leads to death it should cause death it's not just about eternal death it's not just talking about death in this world but death post the world like post our life on this world that is eternal death it's even talking about 
that spiritual death that we experience when we have sin in our life. When we have sin in our life, we, we experience the death in our families, in our personal lives, in our thoughts. We experience death in our lives. We deserve punishment. Every man in this world, every human being in this world is sin. That's what Romans chapter 3, 23 says. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everyone in this world has sinned. Every person has sinned. We need to understand that the God we are worshipping is he's a just God. That's what Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18 says. For the Lord is a God of justice. He's a God of justice. He's a just judge. So a just judge, when a judge is very just, he's a righteous judge. When his son or daughter sin, or when his son or daughter do something against the law, a just judge need to give the punishment, the full punishment to his son or daughter. In spite of having mercy on them, in spite of loving them and wanting them not to experience that punishment, because he's a just judge, he needs to give them the punishment. So if God is a just judge and we have sinned and a just judge needs to punish us for the sin we have done, yet he has mercy on us. Yet he has mercy on us. Mercy is not, not experiencing the punishment that we deserve or not getting the punishment that we deserve to get. We deserve to be punished. We deserve to be punished. But Jesus, but God has decided that we would not, he would not punish us. That is his mercy. We deserve it, but by his mercy, he has not allowed us to bear it. So what can he do? He's a just judge. He needs to give punishment for the sinner. The sin needs to be punished. The sin needs to be punished. That's why the son Jesus Christ took up the sin upon him. He took up the sin upon him. All the sin of mankind was put upon him. He took the sin upon him. He became a sinner for our sake. He became cursed for our sake. He became, he, 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 was, he, he was formless for our sake. Because he took up all the sin upon himself. And he died on the cross on behalf of us. Jesus, Jesus went through the punishment where he was lashed, where he was dragged in the streets, where he was punched, where he was spat upon. He was abused. He was, he was, he was made naked. He was put to the cross. He went through all those punishments for our sake. Because for our sake, because if we need to receive the grace and mercy of God, the just God need to punish his son for our sake. God so loved the world, God so loved the world that he sent his son into this world to take our place, to take our place. That's why in John chapter 19 verse 30, when Jesus died on the was Jesus the last moments of this of the on the cross, it says when he received the drink, Jesus said it is finished. He received the sour drink. When the sour drink was put to his mouth, the sourness resembles our sin. It's our sin. When when he received our sin, when he received the sour drink, when he received all our sin, he said, It is finished. It is done. The transaction is completed. So when Jesus was on the cross, he was speaking in Aramaic and Greek. He was not speaking in Hebrew, but he was speaking in Aramaic and Greek so that, so that all the people who were there could understand what he was speaking. And this is a Greek word. When he said, it, it is finished, he was saying, tetelestai. Tetelestai is a business word. It means the transaction is completed. So when Jesus received the sour drink, that when Jesus received the sins of this world upon himself, then he said, it is finished. The transaction has been completed. 
now human mankind human kind does not need to pay for his her own sin we need not pay for our sin we need not pay for our shame we need not pay for our curses we need not pay for our righteousness we need not pay to be holy there is nothing for us to for us to do but just to confess and just to proclaim that redemption that Christ has given us that transaction that Jesus has completed on the cross he said it is finished we deserve that punishment we deserve the cross we deserve the wages of death we deserve death in our life we deserve death in us in our families in our in our bodies and in our spiritual lives we deserve eternal death for the way we are for the sin we are living in but jesus said no what i'm going to do is i'm going to take up the sin upon me i'm going to take up your curse i'm going to take up your shame upon me instead of you i will be punished instead of you i will be cursed instead of you i will bear the shame instead of you i will die so that you will have eternal life through me and he said on the cross it is finished it is done when he means it is finished he really means it is completely done there is nothing else to be done he did not complete it 1995 98 or 99% but it was a transaction was complete completed 100 100% there is nothing left for us to do there is no personal way by which we could earn our righteousness or holiness or we could be redeemed from our sins but by only by the cross of Jesus Christ because we deserve to die we deserve this punishment but he on the cross he said it is finished so the second thief said we deserve we deserve this punishment but he does not deserve it he understood that Jesus was bearing his sin Jesus was bearing his cross today today we need to understand that if we deserve anything we deserve punishment if we deserve anything we deserve death but it is by the sacrifice on the cross by what jesus did on the cross that jesus took up our yoke he took up our bondages he took up our sin and he put it on himself and on behalf of us on behalf of us he died on the cross and he said it is done so if anybody is listening to me today and has still shame in their life has still some kind of disappointment in their life is ashamed of the life they have lived ashamed of the sin they have lived in let me tell you you need not any longer live in your sin you need not live in that shame you need not live in the disgrace because jesus said on the cross it is finished it is done it is completed there is nothing for you to be ashamed about because everything that has to be ashamed about is done is cut out everything that you have to be sad about is cut out everything you have to be you have to hide your face about is cut out it is completed it is finished the transaction has been done So the second point was we deserve punishment. And the third point, and the third point, let us read again Luke chapter 23 and I'll read through the story in 41 he says we are truly we are we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him truly I tell you today you will be with me in paradise so the second thief looks at jesus and he says jesus please remember me please remember me please remember me and what did jesus say today today you will be with me in paradise it was instant forgiveness it was instant forgiveness the third point is today you will be with me and in that we need to understand that jesus god gives us instant forgiveness when we come to god and we confess our sins 
when we confess our sins as in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 it says if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved we confess our sins at the feet of Jesus and say Jesus I believe that you came into this world for me I believe that you died on the cross for me Lord please wash me in your blood and I believe that you just did not die but you are resurrected for me and you are saved and the saved you are saved instantly it's not after 7 days or 40 days after 1 month or after 1 year or after you have been baptized but the moment that you confess and you give your life to Jesus you and I are saved we are saved if at any point of time in your life you're given your life to God, you're saved at that point of time. You're not still, you're not unsaved, you're saved. And if you today are living in sin and living far from God, what all you need to do is you need to confess your life to God. You need to be washed in his blood. You need to confess and you need to believe that Jesus died on the cross for you and he was resurrected. You are saved. Instant forgiveness. And he forgives like no one can forgive. For the word of God in Isaiah says, For I will forgive their wickedness and remember the sins no more. <coughs> I'll forgive their wickedness. It's not just forgiving. And he says, I'll remember the sins no more. See, God doesn't forget anything. God doesn't forget anything. But for our sake, for our sake, he says, I will remember the sins no more. So when we pray, sit to pray, when we sit down to worship, when we sit down to read the word or we want to make a commitment, the Satan, Satan comes, to, comes and tells us, do you remember the sins that you've done? What kind of a person you are? What kind of, what kind of life you had? Remember, that is only the evil one. It's Satan's thoughts, but it's not God's thought. God does not pull up your past mistakes to shame you if he does it he does it only to bring about repentance in your heart our God is not a God who shames his people his word does not shame us his prophecies do not shame us the visions do not sh shame us his word does not shame us his people do not shame us shame is not from God shame is from the evil one he is the one who causes us shame he is the one who brings us disgrace so if Satan is trying to bring about shame in your life, remember and, re and remember this word for, he said, I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sin no more. He does not remember your sin. And in Psalms 103 verse 8 to 13, he says, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. And this is important. In verse 12 he says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. He has, he has removed our transgressions so far that we cannot, we cannot bring it back together. He has removed his, our transgressions from his sight in such a way that he, would not, he would, does not want to remember it and he does not want us to bring it back. His, his forgiveness is instant and his forgiveness is complete. His forgiveness is instant and his forgiveness is complete. So if today, by any way, if you're still living in the bondage of death, of sin, if you're living in sin, capti captivity of sin, I want you to understand this. I want you to grasp this fact that Jesus forgives you and he's ready to forgive you today and tonight and right now he's ready to forgive you. That you're worshipping a God who sacrificed his life for you. Who took your spot on the cross. Who took your shame, your curses. Who took up our, he took about the penalty of death upon himself. And he just did not die but he is resurrected is resurrected so today it's our wonderful privilege to be buried with Christ to be buried with Christ in baptism through baptism we are buried through Christ we are buried to our old life we are buried through our old way of thinking old way of living and we are resurrected with Christ to live for him and to die for him so would you love to be resurrected with Christ? 
would you love to live a resurrected life would you love to live a, a life that is different from the way you lived before the way you thought before the way you behaved before a life of light and not a life of darkness a light of glory and not light of shame then you need to first be buried with christ we need to be buried with christ to be buried with christ to confess our sins is not just about confessing but let it go and committing our lives to christ and once we are buried with christ because he is resurrected we will be resurrected if you want to experience the experience the resurrecting power of christ first we need to experience the burial we need to be buried to the old person today is the best day to be buried today is the best day to give your life to god today is the best day to submit your life to god and to take a decision to live for god to take a decision to obey god completely that's what he said today you will be with me and if you are willing to confess your and sins and submit your life to god jesus would tell you the same word he would tell you the same word right now as you're listening to this sermon and in your heart you confess your sin and with the mouth you proclaim it right now jesus will tell jesus would tell you he would use your name and tell today you will be with me and i with you we will have fellowship together not tomorrow not next week not after a few days let me see for two days let me check for a few days let me see if you would stand by your word no but right now right now right now right now and today you will be with me and i will be with you what a wonderful privilege that we have what a wonderful privilege that we have in our life to be with him and to be called his children as please close your eyes let us pray lord thank you for this wonderful word lord jesus lord as we have gone through this story lord i pray that you would you would reveal in our hearts the state that we are in do we have expectations of you oh lord jesus that that expectations that are not really your will your purpose but expectation influenced by our own selfish desires and by the world and by those expectations if we are being disappointed and we are we we, we are disappointed with you when you the word forgive us lord and our lord we we understand that we deserve punishment but it's by your mercy and it's by your mercy that we have not been punished and it's by your love jesus that you have taken up our our our, our position you have taken up that punishment that we need to receive you have taken our place our place of death our place of rebuke our place of shame thank you jesus and i thank you lord i thank you for your instant forgiveness I thank you for instantly forgiving us as you forgave the sinner or the thief on the on the cross. I know you still forgive us instantly right now you forgive us. And every person who is confessing the lives today Lord I pray that your love would encompass them Lord that they would your love would Lord Jesus meet their hearts and fill their hearts and they would understand that you have forgiven them at that right moment itself. Let your forgiveness fill their lives oh Jesus. Lord I pray for every person who is confessing and giving their lives to you today. Speak to them and strengthen them and help them O oh Lord remove the shame. Let them not be Lord bring any kind of shame or any kind of rebuke in their lives. I bless every person who has been part of this English worship service. Teach us and guide us on how we need to go forward. In Jesus precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining this worship service. I I really hope that you've been blessed through this worship service. Please do encourage your friends and relatives to join this worship service and may we all be blessed by his awesome presence. Thank you. Praise the Lord.